Well, you're listening to Meeting House here on Faith Radio. It is great to welcome to the program Misu Andrews. She is quite an accomplished author, and she has begun a new series, and it's called King David's Brides. And the first one in the series is called Brave, the story of Ahinoam. And we're going to be talking about this this woman that is among a listing of women who were married to King David. Now, Misu, let me first of all welcome you. We're at the Summer 2024 Christian Product Expo in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Thank and you. you have become, or I guess gained quite a reputation for, as you might say, biblical fiction taking stories from the Bible and really building upon them and constructing stories based on Scripture. How is it that you developed an interest in that? Well, I love Scripture. I love the Bible. And actually, my first passion is research into Scripture. And uh, so that's what I do with my stories. I start with the foundational truth, capital T, truth of scripture then I do lots and lots of research I I laugh and say I only write novels so that it supports my research habit Um, but I I love to take building blocks that I find from historical research archaeology um, original languages and then legends of the Jews um, rabbinical literature that kind of thing I use those as building blocks that I set on that foundation of truth and then I sprinkle in creative fiction hopefully guided by the Holy Spirit, to hold those building blocks together on that foundation of scriptural truth. And hopefully it builds a nice house where my readers can come in and feel at home. They feel like they're in the biblical story and they understand the culture and the, the things of the time that, that these biblical people lived in. All right. This is a little disclaimer here. This is not a gotcha question, but this (laughs) may be a question that people are wondering. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you've got a whole series called King David's Brides. Now, this is not a succession, if you will. It's not consecutive. You have women to whom David was married, all or many of them at the same time. Right. When you look at what the Bible has to say about the definition of marriage, and then you read throughout the pages of the whole of the Old Testament, Mm -hmm. and you see where basic biblical characters, including David, were married to multiple wives Mm -hmm. at one particular time. Mm -hmm. So, from a from a cultural standpoint and from a biblical standpoint, as you talk about contending for the truth, what are we to make? of this man being after God's own heart. We recognize he was not a perfect man, Mm -hmm. but he had a variety of wives at the same time. Yes, he did. And, and that's one of the things that I love about David, um, is he, he really makes you think (laughs) because he's not a perfect guy. And I think David is a precursor of Christ. And I think we have to give grace we see grace in David's life. We see God giving him grace. David breaks the law when he goes to Ahimelech, the high priest, and asks for that sacred showbread to eat. That is breaking the law of Moses. And yet, he is not judged for that. And, and so that we see as ushering in some grace in the Old Testament. He also... It's very clear, Deuteronomy 17, 17, the king should not marry many wives because they will lead him away from Yahweh. What does David do? He marries many wives. And yet we don't see God reject him as he rejected Saul. Again, we see grace, that foreshadowing of the Christ coming in Jesus Christ in the New Testament. And Jesus actually says about David, he, when, when his disciples uh, go along in the grain field and they take grain on the Sabbath and they rub it together and they get grain out of it so they can eat because they're hungry. And the Pharisees are upset with them for doing that. And he says, well, didn't David take the showbread? And he refers mm. to that as almost a, it's okay to break the law when there is a practical, well, 
you got to be careful with that, right? Yes, we got to sure. be careful with that situational ethics. But there is grace, and Jesus was pointing to that grace that David brought into that Old Testament era. So I think with the wives, um, I hope in the book people will understand that David's under David's reason for why he married these women and um but it's it's tough it's a it's a hard thing to wrestle with and i'm wrestling with it even as i'm writing the books sure misu andrews joining us today here on the beating house on faith radio it is the summer 2024 christian product expo in fort wayne indiana the name of the book is brave the story of Hinoam. Is that, that's, that's what we've agreed upon uh, as yeah, a pronunciation. I have no idea how to pronounce <laughs> it either, but I think that'll do. Yeah. Well, you, you, in this series, there are criteria, there are qualifications for being, <laughs> for being included in yes. this King David's Brides series. Yes. So enlighten us, please. So it's six women and these six women are mentioned in 2 Samuel 3, verses 2 through 5. These are the six women that he is married to when he reigns in Hebron. These are the six women who give him his first six sons. So I wanted to write about these women because I feel like they are the very foundation of David's household. And what we see later in David's reign, after he and his men go to Jerusalem, they conquer the Jebusites, they take Jerusalem, make it the city of David, we see some real dysfunction in his older children, extreme dysfunction. And I wanted to know and do research on Mm. Who were these women, these six women, who, who pretty much established the foundation of David's house? And so I wanted to find out more about maybe where they were from or who they might have been or who their ancestry, who their ancestors were. And so some of those kinds of things. So I, I really was interested. Um, the Ahinoam, she was the mother of Amnon. And if you look, Ahead in scripture, we know that Amnon raped his half-sister. So, um, and Absalom, uh, his his mother was Maaka, and she was the only royal wife that David married besides his first wife, Michal. Mm. And he gets her back later Mm. in Hebron. So, anyway, lots of stuff going on. And she has no children and she has no children exactly for the entire time they're married never Hmm. yeah so what did you see as the backstory of a Hinoam if not her specifically you've uncovered quite a bit with respect to her ancestry and the the lineage of where she is from yes scripture only describes her as a Hinoam the Jezreelite now I've been to Israel twice, and when I saw that, I thought, oh, Jezreel Valley. Now, that's up north. So, But when I did a little more digging in Scripture, there is a very tiny village in the Judean hillside called Jezreel. And that was given to the Judean tribe from Joshua at the very beginning of, you know, dividing up all of the spoils when they first moved into the promised land and so it made more sense to me that she would be from the tribe of Judah from that little bitty town in the hills and so I I gave her that heritage well then as I got to thinking I thought it'd be fun for her to be a dagger thrower because as they're going through the through the wilderness David needs a woman who is going to be tough She's going to be able to fight because they're going to need somebody that's tough as they're running away from Saul during this period of time. And so I made her not only a dagger thrower, but also someone who could work the forge, who could be a weaponry specialist. And so in doing that, I also made her a Kenite. A Kenite. Mm. Now, that's fictional. The Bible doesn't tell us anything about who her lineage was, who her parents, none of that. But in making her a Kenite, I could then 
also fiction, make her a descendant of JL. The one mm. who did the tent peg through, right. yep, through Sisera's head. And so in doing that, that gives her the image of courage and bravery. So then we have the title Brave. Mm. And so people know what they're getting when they open that book. Misu Andrews joining us today here on The Meeting House on Faith Radio. She's authored this book called Brave, the Story of a Hinoam. This is Faith Radio Meeting House Media Central at the spring, summer 2024 Christian Product Expo in Fort Wayne, Indiana. So you've, you've created, based on some, some knowledge that mm-hmm. you've gained from the scriptures, you kind of have constructed a profile, yes. if you will, of a Hinoam. Something that's very interesting, and you might, if you would, share with us just a bit about the mindset this woman may have possessed, because after all, at the time she married David, or close to the time that she married David, he was a man, he was a wanted man, he was a man on the run. Yes. So what, that, obviously, life was rather challenging during that time period. (laughs) Absolutely, and she, um, her backstory has to do with her mother and her father, they, as Kenites, they camped outside the Amalekite capital. Well, if you read scripture, that is where Saul failed. He did not completely destroy the Amalekites, Mm. and that's where his kingdom was taken from him. And so they fled the Amalekite capital, and they went to live in Judah, and, and that little town of Jezreel. Now, the Judeans were not happy with Saul, and that we find from Jewish history and Jewish legend. And some of the rabbinic literature talks about the unrest in Judah rising up against Saul. And so we know that when David, his army of 400, they were misfits, pretty much all of those fellas that Mm -hmm. didn't, you know, fit into, they, those were some of the ones who were, kind of rebels against Saul and so she and her father Ahinoam and her father in my story they joined the rebels because they had some issues we won't go into that because it's part of the book but they had some issues with some bandits who came into their town and so they ran and they joined David's band of merry men um, and ended up going to Moab when David went to Moab to leave his parents there um, for safety. And that's all that's all in Scripture. So, you know, there's lots that's buried in Scripture that a lot of times if we don't do the research, we don't realize the full story of David. And so that's my joy is to get to go and do and find the whole story chronologically and present it for a reader to see that whole story. And then they get to go back and look in their Bible and say, oh, I didn't know Mm. that was in there. That's what I love. Misu Andrews joining us today here on The Meeting House on Faith Radio, the summer 2024 Christian Product Expo in Fort Wayne, Indiana, as we talk about brave the story of a Hinoam. This is the Meeting House on Faith Radio. Misu, as we wind up our conversation, you talk about going back, learning more about David, learning more about his background, and using as I guess as a as a vehicle to do that, the story of these women who were married to him, mm-hmm. that bore him children. And of course these children have their own Right. stories. So what do we, I mean, this is very fascinating. This is great material. And I believe we should study the word of God. We should be well knowledgeable about biblical history, but why is this important to us in our lives every day? I never understood that the Bible was one single story from cover to cover. Hmm. I grew up in a home where scripture was taken a verse at a time and used as a weapon because one parent was charismatic and the other was a Quaker. So we had lots and lots of uh, weapon <laughs> weaponry drills. <laughs> There's a lot uh, of potential here. Yeah. yeah. And so um, I, I was very rebellious. I wanted nothing to do with God. 
until someone from my high school days, I was in college at the time, and he came back from a Christian college in Texas. And those Baptists, you know what? They got him by Easter. <laughs> and so he came back, and he told me that the Bible was one story cover to cover, and I didn't believe him. And he actually led me to Jesus with Genesis 3.15. Wow. And he said, there's a crimson thread that runs all the way through the Old Testament. And he began to show me Jesus all the way through the Old Testament. And that is why I write Old Testament biblical fiction. Hmm. Because I want people to know that Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit, they are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And it's important for us to, to go back to our Old Testament and understand what's happening in the Old Testament and that it is part of the New Testament. Unless we understand the Old, we can't fully appreciate what Jesus did in the New Testament. So that's my passion. I don't want you to pick up my book and then not go any farther. My passion is you pick up my book, you read the book. I hope you'll read scripture before you read my book. Then read my book, then go back to scripture and read it again and see if you notice new things after you understand the culture more. Hmm. That's what my hope is. Misu, how can people find you online? You can find me at Misu Andrews. That's 